So apparently, Tony Blair is about to receive a knighthood and set to become Sir Tony Blair. Now, this is obviously fake news because this would be as ridiculous as Barack Obama receiving a Nobel Peace Prize. What's that? Oh, Barack Obama did actually receive a Nobel Peace Prize. My name is Stuart Hooper. I am a lecturer in political science and PhD researcher and trying to approach political problems here on this channel from a non-partisan and very critical perspective. I'm not interested in left versus right here so much as right versus wrong. And there seems to be a whole lot of wrong in this particular story. So Tony Blair is set to receive this knighthood, which is supposed to be a recognition of significant public service. And interestingly enough, these particular appointments are made personally by the Queen. So why is this such a problem? Well, Tony Blair is one of the chief architects, engineers, public relations salesmen of the Iraq war in 2003. Now, this was a war that most of the world opposed. Most of the world was very suspicious of the motives behind this war, preferred to go down the route of sanctions instead of outright conflict. And most of the world could see that going to war in Iraq was going to generate a set of conditions that were ultimately going to become massive, regional, and then eventually global problems. And that is, of course, what happened. Aside from the one million dead in Iraq, at least, we're looking at the creation of ISIS, the Islamic State, the complete overhaul, upheaval of the Middle Eastern region, thanks to its destabilization, which finds its root calls in this conflict. Now, the overall reasons for this invasion originally, of course, were that this was to remove weapons of mass destruction from Saddam Hussein's Iraq. That Saddam Hussein was responsible for abuses of human rights, that he was a sponsor of terror, and that all of this was, of course, somehow tied to 9-11, and we don't need to go too far down the, the road there, but safe to say that those ties were flimsy, to say the least. But this framing of the Iraq war as a moralistic, justifiable mission did successfully craft a degree of international support for it. Um, in reality, however, we have to look beyond the surface level presentation um, that PR salesmen like Tony Blair um, present to the general public. And we have to look at the real reasons behind this conflict. And many highly esteemed academics have boiled these down to really two areas. The first being revenge for what, of course, happened or didn't happen in the 1990s, in the first Gulf War. And of course, black gold oil, which I don't want to go too far into here because this video will end up lasting for hours on end. But let's just suffice it to say that even nations that were supposedly against this conflict, such as France, for instance, French oil companies were literally the first ones in the door of Iraq after Saddam had fallen. That all being said, what did Saddam Hussein actually do? Well, yes, he did have weapons of mass destruction um, in the 1980s. He did use weapons of mass destruction in the 1980s. And he did kill probably at least around 20,000 Iranians, probably around 100,000 Kurds, and it is safe to say that overall Saddam Hussein was not a brilliant world leader and definitely an individual that would fall into the category of genocidal tyrant. The question becomes, was he a threat 
to the entire world? Was he specifically a threat to the United States and to the United Kingdom? Much analysis that we could do into this question would point us down a road that would suggest that actually most of the weapons of mass destruction, if not all, were destroyed in the 1990s. Throughout the 90s, the West, specifically the United States, was bombing Iraq and taking care of this problem. And the issue becomes, however, when we look forward after 9-11 in particular, when the world is in this heightened state of fear and panic and problems and the world's coming to an end, we get these reports that start to spring up that, well, that's not actually the case. Iraq still does have weapons of mass destruction. They can cause immense damage and they are a threat to the entire globe. Now this, I remember this very fondly, even though I was young at the time, I remember seeing newspaper headlines which said, Saddam can hit London in 45 minutes. And this was the lie that was sold to the Western world. And it was sold to the Western world, again, by individuals like Tony Blair. Um, in the United States, of course, we'd be talking about the George W. Bush administration. Don't want to get into that in this video because, again, we'll be here forever. Um, but there are some interesting forces that sprung up around the time, right? In 2002, early 2003, before the invasion. Hans Blix, he was the chief UN weapons inspector that went into Iraq to see what these claims were based upon, right? Is Iraq a threat? Does it have these WMDs? Well, Hans Blix came to the conclusion that both the United States and the United Kingdom were fabricating evidence to justify a war. And again, this is not someone just spouting their opinion online on some blog. This was the chief UN weapons inspector who came to this conclusion. Saddam Hussein was definitely a threat to people within Iraq who stood against his regime. He was definitely a threat to his regional neighbours. He was not a threat to the world, and he was certainly not a weapons of mass destruction threat to the world either. So, despite all this, of course the war happens. The United States, the United Kingdom, the two key players in this one. The Anglo-American alliance striking Iraq. But what happens here? Why does it go so disastrously wrong? Um, well, not just because it's based on, of course, all of these ultimately lies, right? These fabrications that we use to get us there. But because once the Anglo-American forces got into Iraq, they didn't find any uprisings in Iraq that were willing to support them. There were no domestic factions there that were willing to side with the Anglo-Americans. There were no significant defections from Iraqi generals. And there were no fighting groups that were ever formed from groups of people that Saddam had captured and put in prison, right? You'd think that some of these people might want to fight back against Saddam. Well, it turns out that never happened, right? That was never pursued. So the issue, as it boils down to, is this. Many people in Iraq absolutely hated Saddam Hussein. They absolutely hated his regime. But do you know what they hated more? Their entire country being destroyed by foreign forces. This shock and awe attack did not inspire domestic support of the Anglo-American invasion. It actually inspired the complete opposite. Why? It led to not only the death of, as I already mentioned, over a million people, including journalists, families, babies, children, you name it, these people died. But there was a complete humanitarian disaster in Iraq after this invasion. Electricity supplies, food supplies, water supplies, all of this was completely destroyed, devastated, set back 
years if not decades in terms of infrastructural progress. And who of course does that impact? The every day to day population of Iraq, the general public. So this award for Tony Blair, this knighthood, is again another example of a member of the political elite, the political establishment, being rewarded for fulfilling the aims and interests of that very same political establishment, ultimately at the expense of not just lives, but the reputation of the Western world and the utter destruction of what it used to somewhat have in terms of a moralistic position in the world. How can you go around and say that you are spreading peace, freedom, and democracy when this is the true reality of what you actually bring? But let's end this report on a positive note, and that would be that there are now over one million people signing a petition to have this knighthood of Tony Blair rescinded. So we have around one person for every death in Iraq, which is somewhat symbolic, I think, of this whole situation. Now, will this be rescinded? I highly doubt it, but at least this over one million signatures demonstrates that perhaps in future, we have a chance of stopping such tremendously horrendous things from ever happening again. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell for more from myself. And I will always be taking this non-partisan, critical approach to political problems. We need to leave the party politics aside. We need to leave the political labels aside. And we need to come together against these real social, political, and economic forces that are having a significantly negative impact on the world. Because they certainly do not care about labels. They only care about furthering their own power and control. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be back on Monday with a new video.